Impaired driving is a serious offence. It's the leading cause of criminal death in Canada. And Saskatchewan leads the nation in terms of the amounts of incidences of impaired driving. The Saskatoon Police Service and other police services across the province are committed to keeping people safe. And this instrument is just another tool we have in our possession to help detect impaired drivers and keep them off the roads. So the government looked at uh, potential instruments and a committee of forensic scientists at the federal government uh, chose the Draeger Drug Test 5000 as the instrument that would be approved for use in Canada. So it's the same process that occurs with breath testing instrument. The federal government maintains a list of instruments that are uh, acceptable for use in Canada. So police services can't simply choose to buy one, they have to get the ones that are actually approved by the federal government. So in order to use the Draeger Drug Tester 5000, the first step is to obtain the oral fluid sample. So that's done by way of a cassette, which has a uh, uh, collector swab on it. And uh, that cassette is handed to the subject, the test subject, and it's placed in the test subject's mouth by the person themselves. And it usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute to collect enough uh, fluid in order to proceed with the analysis. Uh, once, once that's been done, the cassette is simply inserted into the instrument, uh, which starts a timer, and it takes approximately four minutes uh, to, for the instrument to analyze the sample. While the cassette is inside the instrument, um, this cap is actually pushed on by the instrument over top the swab, which contains the saliva. So that serves two purposes. The first purpose is actually to wring out the fluid and, and force it onto the test strip that's contained inside the saliva, but it also locks the uh, swab so that it can't be reused accidentally or otherwise. And what the other, the other thing the instrument does is it punches a hole into the cassette and this prevents this cassette from being read again by the same instrument. So you have two fail safes to prevent uh, the cassette from being reused. The instrument prompts the uh, officer to type in the name of the subject as well as the police occurrence number uh, for record purposes. Um, and at the point that the four minutes has expired, the instrument will show on its own display whether the subject tested positive or negative for both cocaine and cannabis. So that'll be displayed on the LCD display. And then the uh, officer is able to print out a paper copy, which shows all that same information, it has the name of the subject, the file number, information about the actual cassette used, so when it was manufactured and so forth, and the results being positive or negative for both those drugs. The Draeger 5000 drug tester has an operational range for temperature. So in its case, its operational range is 4 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. So of course, in Saskatchewan, our winters are colder than that, um, which isn't an issue because the, the instrument's meant to be used inside the car, not out in the open. Uh, it doesn't have to be brought to the uh, driver's car. It, it stays inside a police vehicle. Furthermore, the instrument has a self-regulating internal heater and cooling system, which uh, it uses if it needs to prop up its own heat or cool off in the summer. If it's warmer or colder than those parameters, you will not be able to, to conduct a test. The way this instrument is used in the field is that a police officer who has reasonable suspicion to believe that a driver has a drug in their system at the time can then make a demand um, that the person provide a sample for this. So in other words, it's not a random process. There has to be something present that led the officer to believe that the drugs were there. It's like any demand read by a police officer, whether it be for breath, for blood, or for saliva samples, it is an offense to refuse that demand. It's a criminal code offense that carries penalties that are similar to those penalties uh, of impaired driving or driving over a legal limit. It's pretty clear in the criminal code that when the police meet certain criteria, again, reasonable suspicion that in this case there's a drug in the person's body, that the person has to comply with that demand on the spot. Without a warrant. Without a warrant, yes. But once the test is conducted, if there's a positive result, that gives police the authority to go further with the criminal investigation. So that opens up a couple of avenues, one being a blood test. 
So under certain circumstances, the police will be able to demand a blood test. They'll transport the driver to the nearest hospital in order to draw blood, and that blood will be analyzed for a quantity of the drug that they're suspected to have. And that blood will become evidence in court. Now, the other avenue that the police may choose is the DRE, the Drug Recognition Expert Evaluation. So that is a 45 minute battery of tests done at the police station by an officer especially trained who's an expert in the field. That evaluation includes the taking of vital signs such as blood pressure, temperature, and pulse, and conducting a series of physical um, aptitude tests to determine levels of impairment. That test then culminates in the DRE officer making a determination of what category of drug the subject is using and what his, his or her level of impairments are. And that can also lead to a criminal charge. In Saskatchewan, in all cases where a person is charged with impaired driving, whether it be by drug or by alcohol, uh, the vehicle is impounded for a period of at least 30 days and the accused person's driver's license is suspended indefinitely until such time as the matter is dealt with in court. Drug recognition experts are officers who are specially trained. They undergo a very intensive three-week training program. There's two weeks of in-class learning followed by a week of practical learning. And that week of practical learning is usually conducted in the U.S. in a city with a high rate of drug usage. So they'll actually use live subjects of real-life drug users in order to practice the skills that they learn during their two-week uh, in-class training. Concerns have been raised by people who use cannabis for medicinal purposes that because they use every day that they can never drive without THC in their system. So what people need to understand is once again the police will not be administering tests randomly. The police will require reasonable suspicion that the person is either impaired by the drug or has recently consumed a drug in order to administer uh, a test to that person. So if a person is not displaying signs of impairment because they haven't smoked in the last recent, uh, recent period, or if there are no signs in the car of recent usage or any smells on the person's uh, clothing or anything like that, then there will be no test conducted. And so if using medicinal marijuana is no different than using any other kind of medicine. If you're prescribed codeine or any other type of opiate, you have to abide by that particular medicine's directives. So the Draeger Drug Test 5000 doesn't actually give you any quantitative information about the, quantity, about the drugs that are in your system, so it won't tell you that you have five nanograms or 10 nanograms. It's simply a positive or a negative for presence, and those, those thresholds are set by the federal government committee. So same for cocaine, it won't tell you how much cocaine is in your system, just that it's there. There's a lot of uh, talk floating around about the 10% false positive rate that this instrument uh, supposedly, supposedly incurs where it would give a positive reading when in fact there were no drugs present. So where that information stems from is a study uh, done in Norway where they tested just about 400 people. And uh, the main difference there was that their instrument, although it was the same instrument, was programmed to test for six different kinds of drugs, including methamphetamines. So the four kinds that we don't test for incurred a lot, if not the majority of those false positives. So a drug like methamphetamines has a chemical structure that's similar to other things. So that's what was incurring those false positives. So what the Canadian committee did is they decided to only go with cocaine and uh, THC to minimize the false positives. And a lot of people will ask police officers how long they have to wait before they can drive after consuming marijuana, whether it be medicinal or not, and we don't know. This is very much dependent on individuals. It's dependent on your size, on your gender, on your age, how much you use, how often you use, what the dosage is. So if you're unsure, the advice is to talk to your physician to try to determine how long you should wait before you're safe to drive again. But the most important thing is not to guess and risk it because it doesn't matter to the law that you are consuming it for medicinal purposes or any other purposes. Impaired is impaired.